Well, hello. Good morning, everyone. Is it morning? It is afternoon. It is 1216, in fact. It is very early afternoon here. It, however, it may be still in the morning if you're in the mountain time. Pacific time or whatever time zone Hawaii is in. <laughs> um, welcome in, guys. Uh, Gamescom 2020 is about to kick off. As always, they kick it off with a uh, Jeff Keighley opening night live type event. This is... The uh, basically outside of what Sony and Microsoft has already done, this is basically going to be the the one conference we get this year where kind of everyone kind of comes together. Uh, it's going to start at the top of the hour, so forty five minutes. However, there's going to be a pregame, a pre show, <laughs> pregame. Free gaming is something you do when you have a keg in the back of a pickup truck at, at a sporting event. Am I right, chat? Um, <laughs> a little early in the morning for that, but cheers. Um, so uh, it's going to get kicking off again at the top of the hour. The pre, uh, pre-show is going to start at in 15 minutes. So I wanted to kind of get you guys in here, get a little notification rung out to all of my beautiful trophy hunters out there, all my beautiful PlayStation fans and uh, you know, let you guys know that, hey, I'm here. If you guys want to hang out in a chat, that's going to be a little bit more chill, quite a bit more chill than what the, uh, um, the Game Awards stream, which I believe is the channel they're streaming it from. So, um, yeah, I wanted to be able to get those notifications out. As far as what we're looking for here, uh, let's kind of touch base on, um, let me go to Twitter here. Um, Jeff Keeley, of course, can't stop tweeting about things <laughs> so uh he's always a great resource for finding out uh what's going on here um hopefully uh some of this audio doesn't stop here but all right so uh first off here here's what we know we're gonna what what i'm here for um more specifically i guess i'll start with that and, and we can kind of talk about a little bit more of what's coming um also just as a quick heads up when the pre-show starts uh i can give you guys some live reactions talk a little bit but i'm gonna try to avoid talking over any of the the juicier pre-show stuff when the actual uh event starts the the opening live stream uh, opening night live stream starts proper i'll shut off my mic and i will just sit and chat with you all of you guys and cam anthony is another uh, is a member again so welcome back buddy he's already a platinum level which means he's been around for at least six months so and he's also one of our uh, moderator he's actually our uh, token xbox player as well um i got to play some warzone on stream with him warzone is one of the few games i get to play with him because you know cross play and all that uh, as you guys know i do play with trophy club members so uh as Cam and many of you guys already know. Uh, so anyway, let, let me just jump into what, what I'm most excited for. Fall Guys Season 2 information chat is coming. I am super excited about it. I don't know what they're going to show us. Um, first off, Season 2 or Season 1 doesn't end for another 39 days, okay? Let's just be completely clear about that. Season 1's got 39 more days. So I don't know what they're going to show us, how much they're willing to show us more than 30 days out so uh but season two info is coming what I, I i want them to do and maybe this is something they can even do prior to the launch of season two but I, what i want, need them to do is to expand the ranks in the season uh the season rewards it currently goes up to 40 level four and i think i got hit that in like three days chat um so and basically the problem i've run into is i have so many crown i've won 102 games in my career you guys most of you guys know that uh have been watching my streams i've been killing it on fall guys and you guys have been killing it with supporting me with that so awesome um but uh i have really nothing i have no reason to go back in and play i mean i can go and buy everything on the shop for the next few days and i have more than enough crowns uh, I, I can get enough, more than enough kudos to currency. Uh, it's just not enough for me to get. Um, I kind of hit that wall of, well, what now? <laughs> Other than playing it with you guys, because let me tell you, I have been having a blast streaming it with the Trophy Club. I've been picking three of you guys at random, having never even spoken to you, throwing you guys into the stream with me, and, and it's been fantastic. So, um what is slow mode? Slow mode is just a 20 second timer so we can kind of, e I can ease the restriction up now. I just wanted to be prepared for it. Uh, sometimes right as the event, uh, an event starts, 
Um, I'll put it at three seconds just to get the um, hardcore <laughs> spammers out. Yes, Joshua uh, makes an awesome point here. I streamed on Monday, um, Fall Guys, and I managed to get a six-game winning streak. And by the end of that, I was probably completely trashed. I, I was a little tipsy at the beginning of that, but um, woo let me tell you, that was a, that was a fun stream. Um, so basically, Fall Guys, what I need them to do is to add more levels, more than 40 levels. Uh, for Season 2, I need it to go to 100. I need it to at least be 100. Um, maybe they can kind of do the Rocket League thing where you know the first 50 ranks is a, a set pieces of gear, and then there's kind of a randomized version past that. <laughs> Cam and Travis, you guys cracked me up. Um, I love you guys. I love all you guys. Um, so, yeah, I, I need 100 ranks in Season 2. I also need um, Perfect Match to just go the hell away and never come back. Um, that's a game, it's a mini game where I have to, in order to engage my brain, in order to, 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 to make it fun for me, I have to just not look at the symbols and then just randomly pick based on where the rest of the crowd is going. So, I mean, it, it's that's the only way I can make a perfect match. But having said that, I know not all of you guys hate perfect match. Um, but there are certain games people hate, like Slime Climb. However, I love it. Uh, whatever. There, there's games that we have. So kind of like a rotation. Uh, maybe some games just get kicked out maybe permanently. Uh, maybe they just kicked out for a season. And then we can get a, a, some new ones in. I just want to see a rotation of different games. Uh, a lot more different games. I'd like to see them to have twice as many game mini games available where any 24 of them might be active in a certain week or in a certain special weekend or, or for an entire season. I don't know. Uh, either way, uh, they need more customizable op uh, objects for me to wear. <laughs> uh, some cooler ones, some of the early ones here. Hey, Martin, thank you so much for the super chat. I don't know. If I do have my button up here. Thank you. Um, so anyways, that's probably en en enough about fall, guys. Uh, I, I, the world is, is, is swallowing up as much fall guys as they possibly can because it's out at a perfect time it really is um and it's a lot of fun it's sold seven million copies on steam it is now playstation plus most downloaded free game not surprising because they also have a larger <laughs> install base of playstation plus users plus this is one of the few games that is actually day and date with its actual launch instead of coming out six months later when everyone has it and everyone's stuck at home. So I, I'm not exactly comfortable with them patting themselves on the back. <laughs> but um, yes, it is an accomplishment nonetheless. Cyber Nemesis, thank you for the super sticker. How's it going? How's it going, my friend? Cam Anthony sends a super chat. Wait a minute, this isn't a Warzone stream? Well played, buddy, well played. Here's a little Donna love for you. Um, we're going heavy into the meme <laughs> channel memes here. Uh, so we got about five more minutes here until the pregame show starts. So let me just go ahead and look at um, what else Jeff Keeley said was coming. I can't even find him. Scrolling down. How many tweets has this dude put out? I, I swear to God, I looked at this earlier today. And All right, so we're going to have content debuts from 2K, Activision, Bandai, Namco, Bethesda, Blizzard, Bungie, Deep Silver, Devolver Digital which, of course, we know as well, guys. Uh, Electronic Arts, Frontier, Focus Home. That must be Focus Home Inter Entertainment. Or Interactive, rather. Gearbox, Head, Head Up Games. I don't know who they are. PlayStation, baby! <laughs> yeah! Um, Warner Brothers Games, Xbox Game Studios, which I'm really interested to see what they got coming up. Hopefully uh, something a little better. And then, uh, and more. Uh, he, they also, he also pointed out in individual games. Let me see if I can go find this tweet. You know, I thought I'd put it in the description of this video. <laughs> this stream, I could probably just pull that up here. Yeah, all right, so we're going to get uh, some more Black Ops Cold War uh, info. Uh, it was really exciting reveal yesterday. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. Martin J, thank you so much. Where is your last of us part two grounded? Uh, great question. I'll answer that in a minute. Um, 
We're also going to get information about Destiny 2 Beyond Light. I actually don't know anything about it. Uh, World, wow, Shadowlands, is that World of Warcraft? <laughs> um, oh, here, 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 here's one. Doom Eternal, Ancient Gods. You all know. I have a little bit of history with Doom Eternal. Last time I streamed that, I didn't just rage quit the game. I rage deleted the game as uh, I ran into a permadeath trophy issue no one knew about. I should have known about it. Hey, Doc! Doc310 with the $5 super chat. I thought I was the only one to wonder if this was a Warzone stream. It is not. It is not. Um, Cyber Nemesis also with the $5 Australian currency super chat. The Spirit of the North is my new favorite Nemi Fox game. I'll check that out. Uh, Nemi, I don't even know. Overhive Gamer in chat, what's up? All right. Also, all right, I'm going to get back on track here. Little Nightmares 2. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a mobile game. Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, I believe, is a VR title. So, woo! Uh, I think this is going to be a two-hour event. I don't know if it's two hours, including the 30-minute pre-show. Not entirely sure. Uh, so what I need you guys to do in chat is let me know which games you're most looking forward to seeing. Now, he's made it a point to set some expectations, Jeff Keeley did. And... Uh, all right, it says, uh, Opening Night Live will be a showcase of over 35 games, mostly announced titles. We have some things we haven't announced, but a lot of the lineup I've posted on social media over the past week, which I just read some of which to you, uh, just so you know what to expect. So you're basically setting up the expectations. Um, I really want to get a deep dive, and I know we're going to get a deep d dive demo on Ratchet & Clank. Hopefully it's a deep dive uh, and what i'm really looking for with the ratchet and clank is is not just about ratchet and clank but it's about the ps5 overall because ratchet and clank when we first saw that reveal at the playstation uh, event uh god it feels like forever ago uh what was it a month ago i don't even remember uh what year is it <laughs> it's been one of these uh one of those years but um at that thing, they, they really showed us uh, how the uh, SSD is going to benefit us uh, with the transitions. The loading screen, the loading screen was like a transition, just like you saw when I started this. Like if I go from this monitor, which is where we'll be watching this full screen, and then back to this, there's that transition. That's almost as long as it took Ratchet and Clank's transition to load from one world to the other. So that is some of the stuff I'm looking looking at. I'm also going to be looking at um, like the lighting, the global illumination, see what kind of techniques they're using, see what kind of ray tracing, screen play, uh, screen space reflection. What I'm really interested in some of the really dirty nitty gritty nerdy stuff <laughs> um i've been researching and looking into ray tracing for a couple years actually when uh, uh when it was coming to battlefield um what is the newest one battlefield 5 why am i forgetting what uh, battlefield it wasn't battlefield 1 maybe it was battlefield 5 i don't remember whatever the most recent battlefield was but uh that was one of the first games that had ray tracing so i've really been into it um Joshua says he's hyped for Ratchet and Clank, Forza Horizon 5 from Cam. All right. That, you know what? Forza looks beautiful. Beautiful. I've watched that, uh, that, the Forza, um, trailer or whatever, um, several, several times because I was mentioning the ray tracing and the illumination and all that other stuff. And I, I feel like Forza is that, uh, is a really good example. Hey, Center Strain, what up, buddy? Whew, I'm super excited, guys. I am super excited. Let's get Crash doing a little dance here. That's how excited I am. Dance, dance! <laughs> There's another Forza coming out. Cam, don't you know anything uh, about the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There might not be another Forza. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot, man. Crash 4 is probably going to be the last, the last hardcore platinum on the, on the PS4. Hey, look at that. We got some audio here. I'm going to have to turn off my background audio here real quick. All right, hang on here, chat. The opening night live, the show will start. What, what happened to this pre-show? <laughs> I guess it's 15 more minutes. Hey, we have more time to chat, guys. Um, 
Let's see what we we got chat here. We got chat. You're going for the. Yeah, all right. So um, I didn't mean to. Uh, who sent the super chat earlier? I just want to answer the question. Um, I think it was Martin J. Fourteen seventeen. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Martin said to me in the super chat, "Where's your Last of Us two? Par- uh, Last of Us Part two grounded mode." As you guys, many of you guys know, I did an entire walkthrough of the uh, the first game, and a lot of you guys have have commented. I probably gained more subscribers from the Last of Us Ground and Mode walkthrough than I've got gained from anything else in my channel. And I really want to do it with part two, but the problem with part two is I had so much time in part one to practice. I played Survivor over and over, like six months. I forget how many, what was it, a year? How, how long did Grounded come to the uh, original game post-launch? Uh, whatever it was, I had so much practice, and in, 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 in it was a half as long game. <laughs> um, so to answer your question... I was kind of hoping that I would have another six months. I was hoping it wouldn't add until like the PS5 re- re- release. Pre-show is 10, 11 minutes, 32 seconds here. I really thought it was the pre-show was kicking off at this time. But whatever. We have at least have a clock. You guys can't see the timer. I have a cut off. <laughs> uh, Cyber Nemi, Spirit of the North is 50% off in Australia's PS Store. That is good to know for all of you guys living... Is this still on fire, Australia? Last I heard it was on fire. Um, it's been a hell of a year. Fires, hurricanes. I don't know if any of you guys were in the path of uh, Hurricane Laura or, or still in the path of um, Laura. I don't think it's this category one. I don't It's going to be a tropical storm at some point. But yeah, man, I hope you all are safe, stayed, uh, stayed safe. Chances are if you didn't, you probably don't have power. You wouldn't be caring about opening night live <laughs> uh, we got 10 minutes do you guys think I can get a uh, do you guys think I can get a a game of fall guys in here do you guys think I can get a game of fall guys in before we, we kick things off <laughs> let's see let's see ladies and gentlemen let me go ahead uh, we got we got 10 minutes here until the pregame show starts, so let's go ahead and show off some of our uh, skills here. Brad says, I'll play. I would love to play with you, buddy, but we are literally up against the clock. Like, I would hate to be five feet away from grabbing the crown on Fall Mountain and then go, oh, show starting. <laughs> A lot of people are here for Fall Guys. Uh, Fall Guys is the hottest thing going right now. It is probably straight up legitimately my game of the year. Um, what is, do I hear background? Where's this music coming from? I hear music from something. Hang on a second. I don't know what's going on. I, I have like an audio source coming in through some speakers that I can't yet identify. Oh, look at the lag. All right, so good. We can get knocked out. Although I have pulled off a five-game streak, even with the lag. <laughs> uh, yes, Big Tux uh, uh, reiterates that message me earlier. Um, the... Hang on, I have a hard time talking and jumping at the same time. Um, yeah, it's the most downloaded PlayStation game I played. What? What? Didn't they? They? They never actually said what the uh, the thing that interested me. That let me back up. Let me put the words in the correct order before I spit them out of my mouth. Jeez, I can't talk today. Um, Oh, they haven't told us how many PlayStation Plus um, downloads there have been. I think they said 16 million. Did they? They had a number at one point. But they haven't said any updates on the number since, other than to say that they have now had the most. Um, so I'm really curious. I thought they said 16 million PlayStation Plus. I could be wrong. I don't know what it is now. All they're just saying is the, the most. I don't know. Uh, they're doing uh, something for a preview of Season 2, just telling us maybe what it is. I don't know if they're going to show us much. It could literally be nothing. 
Oh, I know what I'm hearing. It's the Gamescom stream in the background. <laughs> you guys hear that? Can you guys hear it? It's very faint. This is another game mode. I'd like to see some, like... I'd like to see it modified in some way. Because these rotating things just kind of repeat over and over. I'd like to see some, like, additional, like... Things. Like a move or this lag. What is going on with this lag, chat? <laughs> oh, I love Fall Guys. I noticed a lot of people in chat say, remember me? To be honest with you, I can never, I have a hard enough time remembering talking points. <laughs> when I'm in the middle of a, a sentence, sometimes I'll even forget what I was talking about. Can be the world's longest uh, log roll. Jesus. All right, there we go. I've yet to fail on that. Okay. There we go. I changed my audio settings, and now we can all hear the right things. <laughs> uh, what do you mean I miss Ratchet and Clank? Cynical says, I feel like I've been baited into watching a Fall Guys stream. Cynical, I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about why you hate this game so much. Even though I'm well aware that you actually technically, I don't think I've ever said that, or even maybe even hinted at it. Oh, tail tail. Oh, good. We can get we can get knocked out and get back right into this game. How how much longer do we got on this? 553, chat. 553. I'd almost rather sit there and watch the clock than to watch a game than play a game of tail tag. <laughs> do 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 do. I like that dude down there. He wasn't even moving. He's like, it doesn't matter what you do in the first minute and 24 seconds of this. It's all what happened that final... Final five seconds. Nemi, thank you so much for the super chat. Platinum Papa, you need to play Hyperscape. I would love to go and play Hyperscape. Uh, I'll play Hyperscape if, if Cynical can devote an entire night of playing that with Manstream. Uh, I lost a little of my enthusiasm for Hyperscape. As you guys know, I was all for it. I streamed it even with from the PC beta. I streamed it from PC. Um, it is free to play. It is a battle royale. But it came out like a week after Fall Guys. And, and, and then they announced that Hyperscape didn't have a platinum trophy. You believe that, chat? What? How the hell did this dude... How was he able to run faster than me? What? Oh! Oh my god! World's longest fingers, dude. Ah! Oh. Did you see that, chat? Did you see that? <laughs> dude, man. <laughs> My God, that was the, the that was the longest arms I'd ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Hopefully, in that announcement of uh, of uh... oh, all right, guys, all right, we are getting close here. We are getting close. Oh, let's see, what else to chat? I should play Rogue Company instead when it goes free to play. It has a platinum trophy. I, uh, I watch Angry Joe do a, a little stream. Oh, and this was my recommended thing. Um, I watch him play a little bit of it. There's trophies for Hyperscape, but no platinum. Yeah, it, it kind of, it, 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 to be honest with you, it, I don't know. I'm not going to say ruined it, but it just kind of, I don't know. Darren says, I think the reason you don't like, I don't like Fall Guys is because I'm tired of BR games. I don't really, Fall Guys doesn't really feel like a Battle Royale game to me. I mean, I know it is in, in, in the actual traditional sense, but it just doesn't play like it. 
they get knocked out or oh, whatever you just hop in another one you, you never are more than like 10 minutes <laughs> you can get knocked out in third round you've wasted what five minutes that's it i mean it's Oh, Travis, Travis, chat's getting a little saucy in there. <laughs> Cyber Nemesis says, if I'm going to play a battle royale game, I want to shoot someone. Fair. Turn off my PlayStation here. Get my screens ready here, chat, so I can watch this along with you guys. There we go. Whew, I'm really excited. So what else did I brust road bustle yet? It's 69 cents and you can platinum it in 10 minutes. Whoa, hold up, hold, hold up here. <laughs> There's a 10 minute 69 cent platinum? <laughs> I don't know about? Man, I'm losing my touch, Chad. I'm losing my, I'm definitely losing my touch. Joysticks Jeff, um, our beloved lead moderator around these parts says i am desperately trying to avoid buying 50 red alika games right now because there is a game sale on the store uh to which a lot of red alika games are apparently 69 cents i don't know um i know you told me about it but jeff you sent me a, a twitter image of the store it was a, a one of those wario 64 tweets i believe and um and I saw Maneater on the top right corner of that screenshot because Maneater is on sale. And Maneater, in case you guys don't know, is a game I streamed it in its entirety and getting the platinum. But it's actually one of my favorite games this year. It was just fun. I mean, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't, you know, it had some maybe technical issues maybe here and there, but it was a very enjoyable and fun platinum. And so it's $10 off through the sale. Oh, Road Bustle. Okay. One dollar, three minute plat. Maybe I should make a trophy guide. I haven't made a trophy guide in a while. All right, looks like uh, we uh, we're gonna kick things up. I'm gonna turn up the game, the volume there. To the Gamescom opening night live 2020 pre-show. Again, I I'm won't talk this over. This is my hot and stinky apartment. I realize you probably have a lot of questions right now. Like, who is this guy? Like, why is it hot and stinky? Is this the show? No. Just to be clear, this is the pre-show. This is you and me for the next 20 minutes getting excited about opening night live proper. The big show. The well, next 16 minutes and 30 seconds, dude. That one's got Jeff Keighley. That one's got a budget. It's going to be fancy looking. Not like this. And then you might be thinking, wait, is the next 20 minutes just this guy with his headband talking to me about stuff? No. It's going to be some of that. It's also going to be me talking. Trailer. We have world premiere trailers right here for the pre-show. I do not have a headband. My job is just to smile at you and fill time in between trailers. <laughs> in fact, we should, I think, start off with a trailer. We'll talk about opening night live. It's going to be big and fun and awesome. But I feel like the best way to kick off a pre-show is just to get right into one. Our first world premiere trailer uh, is a game that was just announced earlier this year at an Inside Xbox event from Bandai Namco. This is... Scarlet Nexus. Hang on a second here. Scarlet Nexus. What is Scarlet Nexus? We've seen this before, right? Oh, why did I mute that? You, mo you motion that I wear a headband? <laughs> All right. Ah, I only have a Last of Us Part 2 beanie. Will that work? Let's do this. You have your ways of doing things, and I have mine. It looks pretty. I mean, it's just a, 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 a style. 
a, a game genre, an art style that I'm just not per that doesn't personally connect with me. Uh, but it does look really pretty. Do I have this on what? They're only broadcasting at 1080p 60. Kind of surprised, actually, to be honest with you. World premiere chat. Now joining us, this is the Gamescom Opening Night Live 2020 pre show. That was a trailer for a video game and not an anime. And I'm Kyle Bossman, not important. For the next 20 minutes, less than, much less than now, we are counting down the minutes until the big show, Opening Night Live, in which you're going to get fresh looks at Fall Guys Season 2, Destiny 2. Call say, of Duty Black Ops say, Cold War was say Ratchet and Clank. yesterday. We're already going to see more of that tonight. Lots of things to see. Sydney Goodman from IGN is going to be giving out the Gamescom Awards for Best PC Game, Best PlayStation Game, Best Xbox Game, as well as talking about some brand new shows from IGN that they are debuting this week at Gamescom. Lots of stuff. Wonderful, an IGN integration. It is going to be a chunky, thick show. But in the meantime, for this pre-show, it is time now for another world premiere on our end. The game next that we're going to see is called Quantum Error. Uh -oh. Parents, we want Ratchet and Clank. It's time to put the kids to bed because <laughs> it's about to get scary as hell in here. I don't care if you're in the Western Hemisphere and it is the afternoon. <laughs> put the kids to bed. <laughs> it is literally 1247 p.m. Just afternoon. PlayStation? I'm in. I'm in. That artifact you recover. I am hoping to have better the answer to all our quality stream at the show st properly starts. It's just like a low bit. It feels like a low bit rate. I think we need to talk about this PlayStation 5 pre-order ridiculousness. Humanity's reach will be infinite. That is not a next-gen game. That yeah, is definitely not an action. I hope it wasn't. More pre show to go and interview with Jeff Keighley. Next up, we have a car brand synonymous with racing and innovation and a key partner of Gamescom for years. Hey, Keighley. They're about to exclusively Ford. reveal the first ever car made with gamers for gamers. Check it out. Ford knows racing. In 2019, we brought our love of racing to gaming and Team Fordzilla was born. And that was just the beginning. You guys need more volume. Project P1 to design a car in collaboration with gamers for gaming. This project was a global first. Can't really tell. Our designers let their imagination go wild. So on to our first global announcement. Please welcome our first ever Team Fordzilla Project right, I got to increase this. I, I'm at 100%, but I can probably add a audio filter, a gain filter. Oh, I already had it at plus 3 dB. Let's try six. That's a double. Now our second global announcement. You got us so excited with Project P1 that we are now committing to make a real world version of this groundbreaking car. Hey, someone in chat got the infallible trophy on Fall Guys. Congrats, man. Congrats. I didn't 
didn't have it was a games, great feeling when I did I it. Think, I guess I would just be writing a lot more. Video games and writing are absolutely my two favorite passions, and I just managed to combine them into a job. So I feel like, honestly, I probably would have finished a couple of books. <laughs> if there was no game, what else would I do? I mean, I'm a, I like tech, but you need to do things on the technology. And so if I can't play things, if I wasn't into gaming, yeah, it'll be a lot of TV watching. If there's out there a universe where I'm not a gamer, then I probably would start to game. I think I will try something to put some smile on the face of uh, everyone. I would watch a lot more movies and read more books and get bored. <laughs> If I wasn't a gamer, I'd be unemployed. Pre-show. Uh, this is only the second year of ONL existing, uh, but I think it is safe to say that this year's will be unconventional. So to tell us what to expect from the show this year, please welcome Jeff Keeley. We are now joined by uh, Jeff Keeley, host and executive producer of Opening Night Live. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, Kyle. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, so back in so anyways yeah let's um let's talk about this playstation plus uh this uh pre-order thing because apparently you have to reserve a reservation or like enter a drawing <laughs> apparently playstation is selecting people to be able to pre-order directly through them play uh, through sony direct so it's like some kind of weird lottery system i'm not entirely sure how i feel about that but it is possible they announced something about pre-orders during this. Uh, it is possible. It's unlikely, but it is possible. Game Fest, and maybe we can bring all these things together to create this grand finale uh, for the show. And and all summer, I was really hoping to to do a show that was a little bit bigger than I've been, you know, broadcasting from home here for many months. And I wanted to do something with kind of a set and a little bit of spectacle to it uh, and bring the whole industry together. And that's, that's uh, well, not a lot's today. happened so far. I mean, just, uh, just some trailers for some content. I don't yeah, really care about. <laughs> Maybe you do. Stuff to, um, show folks, um, from across the industry. to be fair, I, nothing even, the big stuff nothing that even made me remember the names of and, and the games. Of really, uh, you know, interesting titles. Of course, we're going to have uh, some amazing next gen stuff in the show and uh and fall guys season two which uh has you know become a thing over the past couple of weeks so it's it's really fun to have like the big and the small and the the, the surprises and next gen all blended together but yeah it's a, it's a full-blown show two hours is it going to be just back-to-back -back trailers or are you going to do some interviews and demos you We'll definitely see trailers. You will see some extended gameplay demos um, of some titles as well. There will be a few interviews with a couple of developers. Uh, we've got some special guests. And one thing I will say kind of right out of the gate is that this is not sort of wall-to-wall -wall shock and awe announcements of new games similar to last year at Games. Well, that's what we kind of want, Jeff. Updates on games that fans are excited about uh, and meaningful, but you know, the kind of big surprise announcements. Uh, we have a few things in the show and, and you know, we have lots of great things planned for the Game Awards, but similar to last year, this is really a showcase of like big holiday games, games coming next year that you know about. So, you know, I, I would s tell people to set their expectations to be really meaningful updates on existing games versus blowing you away with, uh, you know, surprise shock announcements. Great. Jeff, I'm personally looking forward to the show. Well, that, me too. It's It's been really fun to build this, but, you know, even working with our team, it's been challenging. Did it just get um, awkward to anyone else? It felt like it was awkward to me. <laughs> of COVID, and it's been... Uh, it's been, meant a lot to me that Gamescom has said we still want to do this show, and I think for all of us in the industry, we want that big uh, showcase. So I'm just really excited to honestly like leave home, do like uh, uh, have a set, and you'll see we've got like screens and lights, and it's it's. If we do it right, we're going to hopefully create that magic moment that we haven't felt this summer, right? And a lot of the events this summer have been pre-taped and they've been they've been great and and lots of cool game info, but I really wanted to do something live with a lot of energy to it. So if Yeah, I miss this right, live atmosphere. Very cool. Good luck with everything. Even That's though it's not really the same. The pre -show. I'm I'm doing my best. <laughs> So just so we're all on the same page about what just happened, that was basically an interview with my boss using questions that I mostly already know the answers to. So considering all that, I think that went pretty well. Oh yeah, Detective <laughs> Holmes. We another world premiere trip. Healy's got the PS5 already. Honk, honk, for Dirt 5.
Dirt 5. Who's down for Dirt 5, chat? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know throughout this entire event what you're, uh, what's resonating with you. If you hate something, you don't have to be negative about it. Just say it ain't for me. But if you're really into something, let me know, chat. I'd like to get your pulse. Um, but again, without being, like, railing on something you think is stupid. We're adults here, chat. We're adults. Well, most of us. Gam says, I like the dirt games, but this one doesn't look too good to me. Yeah, it's kind of the weird Far Cry <laughs> uh, 5. The weird colors. I guess that's a lot of games. It does look fun. It does look fun. It does not look like a game I would buy. I don't typically buy racing games. I guess that would probably. Um, but I tell you what, if that was free on PlayStation Plus, I'd be all down for it. You know, give it at least a solid weekend. be continued pre-order now uh, October 16th I believe was the date on that like a vampire bit a car and sucked out gas to hey nemesis to my little pony versus Kitsune is it Kitsune I don't know how to say it that I've been I've been reading your live comments I see them right now everybody's blowing up demanding Kyle's 10 reasons to be excited for opening night live well, let's kick it off. Reason number 10 to be excited for opening night live 2020, feeling excited for next gen again. Number nine, Jeff Keighley wardrobe reveal. Number eight reason to be excited for opening night live 2020, Destiny trailers are usually pretty good. Number seven, it will mean this pre-show is finally over. Number six, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Number five reason to be excited for ONL 2020, Shadow Drops? Shadow Drops. Number four, Fall Guys Season 2. Yes! Three, Sorry. Be excited for ONL 2020. <laughs> Actual gameplay from a mysterious PlayStation 5 exclusive. Ooh! Number two. Everything else in my life sucks right now. And the number one reason to be excited for opening night live 2020. Jeff Keighley said it's gonna be good. We have one final world premiere trailer to show off. And this trailer is an announcement of a Switch version of a popular game from 2018. That can only be described as dinosaurzy. Enjoy. Hey Jeff, I think the Ghost of Tsushima online mode is going to be kind of cool. It'll be fun. I, it'll be something I'm be interested in streaming with some of you guys. I think that things are going to turn out different. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Well, the ones before you did too. This is Jurassic Park. Because they believed that they were in control, and control. Well, here's the thing. Humanity is desperate for it. Ladies and gentlemen, we made it 43 minutes before getting my first copyright claim on YouTube. <laughs> you see, life can be tenacious and stubborn. Life will not be contained. And what makes us such unique creatures? That'd be the first of probably a dozen, the by the way. Of what we're up against and still believing that we can win. Complete edition? I didn't even know that was the game. <laughs> that game existed. <laughs> I had a Nintendo Switch, I guess, but... So I can be forgiven. That's World it. That's premiere. All we have for you in this very pre-show, please be excited for the actual opening night live in which you'll see some Destiny 2. You'll see Fall Guys Season 2. You'll all see right, Cam. Black Ops Cold War. See you, buddy. Mysterious PlayStation 5. Ratchet and Clank. Some things we've probably never heard. Sorry, this is my um, Ratchet and Clank little show. I'm personally excited about it. Me. I should thank you actually for putting up with my nonsense for the last. Let me says I bought that game, <laughs> which you didn't. Uh huh. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Sorry. So what's the plan? The time to take control. Holy lag. 
When we feel out of place, disconnected, and divided, there are always repercussions. Do we have what it takes? All right, I'm going in. To be heroes? What are we doing here? Oh, it came out on PS4? Tonight, we and Xbox two years ago, Joshua? Thank you. We Apparently, I don't stay up to date on my Jurassic Park news. I unsubscribed to that newsletter years ago. What we are. I'm with you every step of the way. The future of gaming. Welcome to Gamescom, opening night. Long. I played uh, Ace Combat Seven at E3 a few years ago. That's the only time I played it. Hello, everyone. Let's I'm do Jeff it. Healy, and welcome, welcome to Gamescom Opening Night Live. How's it going, Jeff? Now, this year, Gamescom is, of course, a little different than normal. All right, I'm going to get quiet here, guys, so I will see you at the end of this. Healthy at home. In 2020, games have comforted and connected us more than ever. And with the launch of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X later this year, games are only going to get better. Well, all summer, I was hopeful we could get to this very moment, a big live showcase filled with more than 35 games to kick off Gamescom 2020. Tonight, you'll get a first look at Fall Guys Season 2 and an extended gameplay demo of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart for PlayStation 5. Plus, we might have a couple surprises along the way, too. But before we start, I want to acknowledge and thank all the game developers, marketers, and publishers who have worked under challenging circumstances to keep us entertained. This show is nothing without them or my production team, and doing a show at this scale safely is not easy, especially when all of you at home have some pretty insane expectations. I hope tonight reminds you why you love to play games. And with that, we're going to move on to our first game with a game that was just announced yesterday, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And joining me is Dan Vondrack from Raven to tell us about the game and give you an exclusive sneak peek. Dan, how you doing? Good, Jeff. Thanks for having me here. This is... Uh been a dream project for us to work on from the from nearly the beginning of development we knew black ops cold war was going to be a direct sequel to black ops one and we loved the idea of returning to the pillars built the black ops franchise deniable operations conspiracy grounded in history and that shadowy world of paranoia and we get to mix all those together drop the player into the 1980s at the height of the cold war and it's really something that we know would feel relevant to today and also uniquely black ops well, you start playing with Black Ops, everyone wants to know characters. We saw yesterday in the reveal trailers, you know, some familiar faces. So, you know, Woods, Mason, like break it down. Um, how does this fit into the Black Ops cans? You said it's a direct sequel. So are we going to see a lot of familiar faces? Yeah, part of the fun in making this game was bringing back the iconic characters like Woods and Hudson and Mason and seeing how all those personalities mix with some of the new characters. So the campaign takes place in 1981, and we love that we've been able to have so many connections to the original Black Ops and really be that direct sequel to the game. Uh, now, one thing that I'm really excited about this is you're pushing the storytelling in kind of a new direction with some branches and some options about how you play through the campaign. Can you maybe walk us through your thinking there? Yeah, one of the driving forces from early in development was to say, let's take this Black Ops thrill ride and infuse it with some player choice and some player freedom, anything we can do to give the player a little more ownership over their experience. So that starts with allowing the player to create their own character for the Cold War campaign. They can name them and pick a military background and really pretend they are that Black Ops soldier that they want to be. From there, we wanted to take some of our missions and infuse optional objectives, multiple paths, and some player choice moments inside some of those missions. And it was fun to find that balance between the hard driving Call of Duty action and these more non-linear experiences in some, inside some of the missions. So with choice comes the player wanting to feel that impact. So some of those choices earlier in the game and some towards the end will actually shape the ending of the narrative of the campaign. All right, so multiple endings to this game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's, that was one of the big things for us. It's like we love that Black Ops has always been willing to take risks, and we all know they did some of this in Black Ops 2. And with our story and with these features, we love playing homage to those early Black Ops games. Oh, yeah, I remember the numbers. All right. Uh, well, Dan, uh, we are excited to see more of it. I know multiplayer reveal is coming in September, but uh, since you got a switch there, maybe you could flip the switch on something exclusive for us. Right? What are you going to see? 
Yeah, absolutely. This is really exciting because this will be the first time we've done this outside the walls of the development studio. This is a scene from earlier in the game, and it's a critical point that really shows the narrative of the world, shows this threat that our heroes are going to be battling. So let's take a look. Nineteen forty-three. Detailed information from the Manhattan Project was stolen from Los Alamos by the Russian spy known as Perseus. Nineteen sixty-eight. Vietnam War. Viet Cong soldiers orchestrated by Perseus attempted to steal an American-made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. Five days ago, while on a mission. We acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus, the CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. General Haig. Allow me to introduce the man who is suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer, Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, but then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Why do you say that? Sir, every time Perseus has come into play, it shifted the balance of the Cold War. After 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. Mr. President. Sir. Mr. President. Mr. President, this is Jason Hudson and Russell Adams. I know their names. Who do you think approved their last mission? Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular, most likely illegal. If the press gets a hold... What the hell are you talking about? Do you know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods. Plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task, protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Tonight we have some new game announcements for you guys as well, including this one, a new next-gen narrative action-adventure game from Reflector Entertainment in Montreal. It's called Unknown Nine. The game tells the story of Haruna, a woman raised on the streets of India and haunted by visions of her own death. Haruna struggles to understand her mysterious, innate abilities to manipulate the unseen. Check out this first look.
All right, let's get to the gameplay. One of this year's biggest games has been Doom Eternal. Tonight, we've got an exclusive first look at the campaign expansion called The Ancient Gods Part 1. Check this out. Twenty twenty marks the twenty fifth anniversary of a legendary game studio, Bioware. Tonight, Casey Hudson and the team wanted to give everyone around the world a little taste of what's next. Casey, over to you. Hey Jeff, it's great to see you again. You know, six years ago, we were on the stage with you at the two thousand fourteen Game Awards, accepting the Game of the Year for Dragon Age Inquisition. And since then, we've been imagining new ways to use next-generation technology to bring the world and characters of Dragon Age to life. We're still in early production, but we thought it was time to give you the very first look at how Bioware's passionate team of developers are crafting this very special game. I've been at Bioware for a really long time, so I've got to see it grow up and turn from a, from a company of 35 people to a company of more than 300 people. There's amazing people in the industry. There's amazing stories to be told with other people. I love that character so much. <laughs> <laughs> we're very experimental here at Bioware. So we're always coming up with new stuff. Uh <laughs> we're always trying to improve, innovate, and bring new characters to life for our players and fans to enjoy. The world of Dragon Age really has got it all. It's got frontier stories, it's got mystery, it's got hard-boiled detective stories. And of course, it's all wrapped up in kind of a fantasy setting. You really feel like you're the hero in the Dragon Age world and you're saving people. Dragon Age to me is a wonderful world to play in. I am really excited about the future of Dragon Age. This is an original world, original flora, original wildlife, original architecture. That makes it fun to explore and discover. In the next Dragon Age, we get an opportunity to, to see new things, new places, and interact with people who lived and grew up in these spaces as well. For the game we're working on now, we want to tell a story, what happens when you don't have power? What happens when the people in charge aren't willing to address the issues? The things that you can expect in the next installment are going to be stories that focus on the people around you and the friends and family you make. Something that we'll be able to look forward to in Dragon Age is a really close relationship with game characters who really become real for you. We want characters to either be loved or hated. One of the best examples of that is Solus. Half the community wants to kill him, half the people want to marry him, then another part wants to do both. They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you when this is over? 
Bioware and EA has been one of the forerunners in using motion magic technology, and that makes it way more realistic when you're looking at the characters and the way they walk and move and interact in the world. Players want in that suspension of disbelief that this wonderful collection of digital pixels is actually a living, breathing soul. No, 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 it's okay. That's the good kind of rumble. I actually design bosses. I help with the creature design team as well. So I do all of like the big threats that you have to go up against. Nobody dies on my watch. For the Wardens! Choice is a big part of what Dragon Age is as a franchise. The decisions you make can affect change in the world. Decision making can mean that a party member lives or a party member dies. And it means owning your outcome and reactivity to the choices that you do make. I just love the possibilities that Dragon Age offers us, and I'm excited to explore a lot more of them. To me, that potential is what gets you up in the morning. It's a fantastic opportunity every time. Next up, it's time for something special. Great Scott, I think there's been a serious miscalculation. Wow, wait, you're, uh, what, what's his name? Back to the Future. I'm Emmett L. Brown, doctor of physics, not of medicine, and certainly not that quack from Rick and Morty. Yeah, we know who you are, but what Jeff, are you here? I did come back from the future to this precise moment on August 27, 2020, because it's imperative we launch Surgeon Simulator 2 right now. And what exactly do you have to do with Surgeon Simulator? <laughs> During the mid 20th century, some friends of mine from a large Shire University invented a state of the art medical training facility, otherwise known as the Surgeon Simulator Training Program. Now, 70 years later, we've digitized the experience. It's unbelievable. You can access the program through your computer and then be medically trained from the comfort of your keyboard. And it's available as of... <gasps> Great Scott! This very moment! Tonight, I want a world premiere, a few examples of some of the incredibly successful test subjects who have already completed the course. So you're saying a world premiere will save our future? Only time will tell. And speaking of time, I'm off to another world premiere, Avengers 26, The Return of the Son of Thanos, opening 2077. And with that, I leave the fate of the human race in your hands. Just make sure you play Surgeon Simulator 2. Now, doctor's orders. Pat on the head. Where does this pat go? We, there, we got it. He looks good as new. Now grab the good arm and bring it in here. We're dying. He's dying. Oh, oh my God! Oh, that's not right. My finger slipped. He gets the run. Oh, it came out. It Jesus Christ! Put it back. Oh, oh, it just, oh, 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 oh it's okay. Okay. He's fine. He's perfect. <laughs> we saved him. Doc Brown introducing Jack Septicai playing Surgeon Simulator, only on opening night live. All right, well, if you thought that crossover was kind of crazy, wait until you get a load of this next game announcement that I don't think anyone probably saw coming. Check this out.
Tonight is just the start of Gamescom 2020. Over the next three days, there are more streams from IGN and Webedia with in-depth looks at games, a digital cosplay contest, and some special new shows just for Gamescom. Your portal for all things Gamescom this year is Gamescom Now, which you can check out at gamescom.global. Now, one game you'll hear more about later on IGN's post-show is this one, a return of two classic characters that I love. Check this out. In a world gone strange, one elite force stands against the darkness. But even they could use some help. Here, slip on this little beauty for effect. <gasps> Sam, I'm blind! Oh, hello, miss. The return of Sam and Max. Yes. All right. And now it's time to say hello to my wonderful co-host for ONL from IGN. Please say hello to Sydney Goodman. Thank you, Jeff. What's up, everyone? I'm Sydney Goodman, and I am thrilled to be here. Gamescom is always such a fun event, and throughout the show tonight, I'll be telling you about all the different ways that IGN is involved in this year's festivities. But first, I have an award to announce. The winner of Best Nintendo Switch Game is Little Nightmares 2. Huge congratulations. Like I said, IGN is going to be here for all of Gamescom with great shows such as Gamescom Studio, where you can find me and my co-hosts for all day long games content, interviews, dev talks, and more. Plus, we have Gamescom Awesome Indies, the show with and for indie developers. That premieres Saturday, August 29th at 7 p.m. Central European time, so be sure to tune in for more announcements and special guests. And now, let's go back to Jeff for our next big world premiere. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sid. Uh, we are so excited to see what's in the uh, the Gamecom studio and also awesome indies. And I'm going to be on the Daily Show tomorrow, so looking forward to that. All right, well, on to our next game. In the next World of Warcraft expansion, players will journey beyond the mortal world of Azeroth to a place where no living soul has set foot before. The Shadowlands, the afterlife of an entire Warcraft universe. The infinite realms of the Shadowlands are watched over by different factions, known as Covenants, each holding dominion over a different aspect of the afterlife. And depending on how someone lived their mortal life, they may end up as part of one of these Covenants when they cross over into the Shadowlands. Today, we're excited to give you a closer look at the noble and pure Kyrian Covenant from the realm of Bastion, who are charged with carrying the souls of the dead into the beyond. So sit back and get ready for the world premiere of Bastion, the first in Blizzard Entertainment's new four-part series of animated shorts called Afterlives. Enjoy. Selfless life, and for that, you have been chosen. Chosen? To shed your mortal burdens and join the ranks of the Ascended, serving to ferry the souls of the dead unto the Shadowlands. I serve the light, and my work is not done. There is an evil that must be. There is no evil here. The darkness was sealed within the Maw long ago. You're wrong. 
He destroyed my home, murdered my people and my king. He must be punished. You are an aspirant now. You must accept your new purpose and purge yourself of this desire for vengeance. What I desire is justice. Devos, why are you training this soul? It is beneath your station as a paragon. He cannot let go. He continues to demand retribution for his death. And this concerns you? Many souls take eons to ascend. Yes, but this one seems broken, Thenios. Unlike any soul I have seen, I have begun to wonder whether he was deemed worthy of Bastion. By mistake. Be careful, Devos. I would not let the Archon hear such a thought. In time, he will forget. Trust our ways. Trust the path. Devos, how long must we train? Until you are ready to ascend. And what is keeping me from ascension? Nothing but the memory of your mortal life. How can I forget when I can still feel his blade? Your soul is wounded? Who did this to you? He was my student. He betrayed us all. Show me. <sighs> the runes on his blade were unmistakable. This dark agent runs free on a mortal world with the power of the Maw itself in hand. Our realm is imperiled. Impossible. The Maw is inescapable. You must return to the path. If he had purged his life, we never would have known of this calamity. The path is flawed. Enough! The order of the Shadowlands depends on the execution of our eternal charge. You will abandon this course. As you command, my Archon. Uther! The time of your ascension has come. I thought I was not ready. Do you wish to see him punished? I do. Then prepare yourself. The moment he falls, we will claim him. I see. Only darkness.
right, hope you guys enjoyed that exclusive look at Bastion. Now, we know many of you can't wait to experience Shadowlands, and our friends at Blizzard want you to know the wait is almost over. October 27th, it is official. And we have so much more opening night live still to go for you. Ratchet and Clank, PlayStation 5, uh, much more. Stay tuned. All right. But now it's time for the announcement of a new universe that is coming to gaming for the first time with a project from a Canadian studio. Check this out. They have returned. They corrupted. Divided. Conquered. Until finally, the gates of the celestial realm were thrown open. Our last remaining hope, the Stormcast Eternals. Vengeance made manifest. Now, you guys may remember back in June, I had some masked fun with my buddy Crash Bandicoot announcing Crash 4 It's About Time. With the game coming in October, Crash, of course, had to come back for opening night live. So let's bring him out, everybody. Crash Bandicoot. What? He's where? Crash apparently didn't get the memo about Gamescom, but to tell us more about what we just saw, I'm joined by Lou Studdert from Toys for Bob. Uh, Lou, w what did we see there with uh, Crash and the Gamescom bot? <laughs> uh, apparently you saw him wandering around Cologne, but uh, what he was hinting at was kind of our reveal of what we call flashback tapes, which are a brand new style of level that we are announcing here today. Okay, so uh, how do these flashback levels kind of play into the overall Crash 4 narrative? Yeah, so the way that the, the flashback tape levels work is that they are kind of a peak back in time to the 90s when Neocortex was actually testing on Crash and Coco before the events of Crash Bandicoot 1. And they're kind of these devious puzzle rooms that we've made, uh, and they're really hard and they're really awesome and they're super creative and we can't wait to uh, get people's hands on them yeah no I, I i got to play a demo of this a few weeks ago and that was a challenge so i can't imagine um how <laughs> nefarious these are um how are they going to be sort of integrated into the game are they are they optional like offshoot stuff or how do you how do you get to them 
sure. So players actually have to collect the flashback tapes in the levels themselves. Uh, they're an object that they can pick up, and to actually pick them up, they have to reach them in the level without dying. It's uh, kind of our homage to the death routes from the original trilogy. So players have to reach these objects in the level, pick them up, and then once they get them, they'll get access to these unique levels. So beyond the pure challenge, uh, what other fun, so how, how are these fun for players to kind of experience and what do they get to do in them? Sure. So one of the things that we did was we actually used these as, like I said, puzzle rooms, really kind of fun, nefarious, devious ways for Crash to really express that pure platforming kind of uh, aspect of gameplay that we know and love about the franchise. But then narratively for us, it was really cool to layer in kind of a unique perspective to the franchise. This is the moment when Cortex is really excited about the prospect of Crash being on his team because Crash was originally created by Cortex, and so this is a weird point in time that's never really been explored in the games before. Awesome. All right. Well, Crash 4, it's about time. Looks phenomenal, Lou. Uh, we cannot wait to check it out uh, in October. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, we will be right back after this for more Gamescom Opening Night Live. I have become terror. The unseen predator. A rupture that obliterates without warning. Alone, the hordes of Enoch will fall before me. But together, this entire planet will fear us. The anomaly alters us each in our own ways, yet we are drawn down the same road into the dark heart of creation. Cause I feel the way you feel. Yeah, I you we will find the source. Whatever it holds, whatever it takes. Hyperscape. Enter a contender. Yes, take them. Believe as a champion. This is it. Welcome to Necromunda. I can see you're new here. Let me get you up to speed. The Underhive's named well. A sprawl of humanity suffering away like ants. Deep underground where we ain't causing trouble for the rich boys and girls, no matter how loud we are. And do we ever make some noise? Every Orlock says they could shoot the tail off a lashwork and they'd splash your head from 20 paces for saying they couldn't. I don't want to say immortal. But when their armor, blood, skin, and will are of iron, it's a potent combo. Why would someone like you want to know about an all-female gang of psychopaths, drug dealers, killers, cloners, and... Oh, makes sense. An Escher will cut you up just for the fun of it. Goliaths are big. That's it. 
Anything smaller than them doesn't deserve to live. And they're just as happy filling you with lead as they are smashing you to pieces with a power mold. Now, mixing that whole pot together in a place like this, you can imagine what happens. Chaos. Gang warfare. For wealth. For power. Hell, sometimes just for fun. So, think you're ready? Necromunda Under High Wars comes to PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC on September 8th. O futuro dos jogos, além de realidades virtuais extremamente fidedignas e realistas, eu acho que também se encontra em formas mais expressivas e absurdas, quebrando cada vez mais esses paradigmas de formato de videogame que a gente tem e sendo usado mais do que nunca como uma ferramenta de expressão artística. I envision the future gaming to be quite bright and quite online. The next generation of console will clearly allow AAA and indie developers to build more creative-driven games that I hope will cover more diverse subjects. I want to play all kinds of stories about people and places, both real and imagined. I want comedy games, I want autobiographical games. I really want to see what people can do with the media. Para o futuro dos games, eu vejo uma evolução, obviamente, gráfica, mas eu vejo ainda mais evolução na inteligência artificial e na maneira com a qual a gente interage com os games tudo em busca de experiências mais imersivas. You know, one of the things I love about opening night is that we can show you the biggest games in the industry and also smaller titles that should be on your radar. So pay attention to this next game. It comes from a team of two in Sweden, Tuxedo Labs. Over the past three years, developer Dennis Gustafsson has built his own game engine to realize his vision for a fully destructible game world. What he's building has absolutely blown me away, so I asked Dennis to prepare a special trailer just for tonight. I hope you're equally inspired by the ideas in this next game, definitely one to watch. Teardown. Last year at Opening Night Live, we announced Little Nightmares 2 to the world. Well, the team at Tarsier Studios hasn't shown anything since, but that changes right now. Here is a first look at the gameplay of Little Nightmares 2, which is coming next February, with more to come throughout the week at Gamescom, including a live demo on Gamescom Studio tomorrow. Thank you.
WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler, and I'm reuniting with my old buddy Mauro Ronaldo to bring you all the over-the-top action in WWE 2K Battleground. Mamma mia! <laughs> this is great! This arcade-style video game is over-the-top outrageous, with over 70 WWE superstars and legends brawling it out like never before! Oh no! Hold on to your toupee, Moro! Look out below! WWE is L-I-T! You know, I'm a little more old school than Moro, so I can't wait to see these WWE legends teach these kids a thing or two. And you know what? Here's a closer look at the insane action. It's a great evening for WWE action. Oh, wow. Take that, Moro. Man, it's so good to see the Bella Twins at their best. And now, let's keep this party rolling with another matchup. Oh, look out, Moro. The Undertaker has risen, and Finn Balor is about to be taken for his last ride. Mamma mia, what a move! Finish him! Oh, no! He just hit the snooze button! How do you lose like that? What's the matter with you, Legends? This is just an example of the pandemonium that you're going to experience when you head to the battlegrounds. Whew, that's a big toy hammer. Oh, I can't believe my eyes! Seth Rollins delivers the stop! What a night. What a night! This is the greatest thing I've ever seen! Pre-order WWE 2K Battlegrounds today and brawl without limits. Mamma mia! Oh, sorry, Moro, I know that's your line. Hello again. I have even more awards to announce, so let's get right down to it. The winner of Best Action Adventure Game is Watch Dogs Legion. The city needs a resistance. It starts with you. What do you say? I'm the perfect shot. The winner of the best action game is Star Wars Squadrons. Think you can escape? This is gonna be close. best multiplayer game is Operation Tango. Operation Tango. It takes two to save the world. I used to be an explorer. The winner of best indie game is Curious Expedition 2. I could not believe what I had witnessed. It was time for the world to learn my name. Congratulations to all the winners. As I mentioned, IGN will be here for all of Gamescom with great shows and new ways for you to get all your gaming news. Check it out. Gamescom 2020 is the heart of gaming, and you can keep to the beat right here on IGN. We've turned the single biggest show in gaming into five. Gamescom Now is your virtual show floor with up to the second live coverage. Gamescom Daily Show, Gamescom's first ever late night talk show. Our Gamescom Awesome Indie Show, the freshest deep cuts in indie gaming. And finally, the Gamescom Best of Show, including the Gamescom Award. Gamescom 2020 is available on IGN and wherever you stream Gamescom Now. And now it is time to talk about that best action game winner, Star Wars Squadrons. This is a new immersive space combat game from Motive Studios that delivers the ultimate Star Wars pilot fantasy. We've missed those. In Squadrons, you'll suit up and fly for both the New Republic and the Galactic Empire across intense 5v5 multiplayer battles, as well as an all-new authentic single-player story set after the events of Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Today, we'll get a glimpse at what Squadron's story has to offer by taking a brief look at one of the single-player missions featuring some light narration by the Motive team. Let's check it out. We all choose our path. Light or dark. Freedom or destruction. The Empire chose to destroy Alderaan in order to spread fear and douse the fires of rebellion. But the heroic pilots of the Rebel Alliance have chosen to keep fighting. 
to show the Empire that we are not afraid. It was their bravery that ended Palpatine's reign and brought about our new Republic. However, the Empire lives on, shattered though it may be. As I speak, Imperial forces are edging toward the Bormia sector, hoping to end our new Republic before we find our footing. As their Empire collapses, they try to tighten their grip. But the galaxy is changing, and you can be a part of it. With the help of brave and daring pilots, this war can end. Make a choice. Fly with the New Republic. Change our galaxy for the better. Hi, I'm Suzanne Hanka, narrative producer on Star Wars Squadrons. Our single-player story is one of daring pilots and deep-seated rivalries. Take Titan Squadron. Hunt down this Starhawk and eliminate it. Gladly, Admiral Sloan. Over the course of the story, you'll fly as two pilots on opposite sides of the war. And, like all modes in Star Wars Squadrons, you'll have the option to experience every mission fully immersed in VR. Wedge on two leads. Rogue Squadron. I hear you're the reason I was able to finally get a comm through. Today, we're giving you a glimpse of an early Imperial mission behind enemy lines. One of our spies, Agent Thorne, has discovered vital intelligence on Project Starhawk. Your mission is to extract her from an orbital outpost above Hosni and Prime. Behind enemy lines, you'll have to eliminate perimeter defenses. The outpost is defenseless. When you've secured the area, you will escort the Gladius to the outpost, and our extraction team will acquire Agent Thorne. Once Thorne is secure, reach your Gozanti cruisers and return to the Overseer. Cover our escape and escort us to the jump point. We have Republic Corvettes inbound. Move, Titan! Gladius, change course and keep Agent Thorne safe. Titan 3, take out those fighters. Understood. I'll handle it. You have my thanks, Titan Squadron. No time to celebrate. Move on. Each mission will immerse you into the escalating conflict between the New Republic and a Shattered Empire. Debrief with your squadmates between missions. You're our new wingmate. Customize and master all eight starfighters and join the galaxy's finest. I need you focused and ready to go. From bombing runs at the Nadiri dockyards to setting a trap in the Xavian Abyss. The story of these rival squadrons will push the war to the brink and define the galaxy for years to come. I look forward to seeing you in combat October 2nd. That is not all EA has to share from a galaxy far, far away today. At Star Wars Galaxy Edge, you can enter the world of Batu, where you can visit Oga's Cantina or jump into the Millennium Falcon on a run to Smuggler's Cove. It was this incredible adventure at Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World Resort that inspired The Sims' latest game pack. Check this out.
There is even more Star Wars to come later in the show. Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga is up. And as we move into our second hour, we've got Fall Guys Season 2 still to come. The reveal of that, which I can't wait for you guys to see. And of course, a gameplay demo of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for PlayStation 5. But right now, you might remember this next game from Annapurna Interactive from last year's Microsoft E3 event. And today, I'm excited to share a new announcement from the team. This interactive thriller about a man stuck in a time loop is one of this year's most intriguing indie titles. And now, they've added an absolutely all-star cast to the game. Here's a whole new look at 12 Minutes. All right, close your eyes. I want you to think of a flower. Look at its contours, its curves. Now I want you to imagine it changing. Moving backward, returning to its bud. Think of that bud, unopened. Look at it as a whole, then silently repeat these phrases. May you be free from suffering. May you be free from fear. May you know peace and joy. That's going to be a really special indie game. So glad to announce that here on the show. Uh, now, last year at the Game Awards, we announced Godfall, a new looter shooter coming to PlayStation 5 and PC from Counterplay. Tonight, we've got a quick sneak peek of one of the new Valor plates with more footage coming as part of Gamescom 2020. Check this out. We have much more ONL to come. Exclusive looks at Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, Fall Guys Season 2. <laughs> Wait until you see what the Mediatonic guys are up to, and so much more. But first, I'm sure you saw that earlier this week, Heart of Deimos, Warframe's newest uh, expansion, was released on PC, Xbox, and PS4. And today, it's also on Switch, all platforms. Here's a look at the Heart of Deimos. Expand, explore, tear the veil asunder, subvert new territory to our sovereign will. But that was what it wanted too. It raged unchecked through metal, bone, flesh. Life. We are infested with it. What? Visitors? Now, the gateway is failing. The jaws close. The final heartbeat approaches. Try turning it off and on again. But before we fall, we shall scream. There is one who will hear the heart of Deimos. So many people have been discovering or rediscovering video games during lockdown, whether it be older people or bored teenagers or middle-aged parents who suddenly find they have 
to do something together with their kids and I think I've given out more advice about video games in 2020 than any other time ever and as a result it's more important than ever that we keep making different interesting things for folk to play. A pandemia pela qual a gente está passando tem sido um período difícil a todos. Então, nesse momento, eu acho que a gente precisa lembrar de mostrar mais empatia, demonstrar mais amor, mais carinho e saber que a gente vai sair dessa juntos, vai ser difícil, mas isso tudo vai passar. I hope everybody gets healthy and safely through this corona virus time. Uh, care about other people and wear your masks. Jogos são, na minha opinião pessoal, a forma de arte mais incrível de se expressar. Eles englobam tudo: música, arte, escrita, e você tem a chance de controlar e vivenciar essas experiências você mesmo. É mágico, é maravilhoso. Jogos são por amor. All right, guys, we're back officially into hour two. We've got an hour more of great stuff to show you. Destiny 2 Beyond Light Stasis. You're going to see a brand new look at that. Fall Guys Season 2 and Ratchet and Clank for PlayStation 5 and so much more across the next hour. Opening Night Live continues, and it just is the start of Gamescom 2020. But right now, on September 25th, Mafia Definitive Edition launches a comprehensive, built-from-the-ground-up remake of the original Mafia. Tonight, we've got the exclusive debut of the next trailer called A Life of Reward Too Big to Ignore, which deals with Tommy's induction into the Salieri crime family. Check this out. All these guys in this room, they're here because they have the only thing that matters to me. The only thing that should matter to any of us. You know what that is, Tommy? They're loyal. That's right. One day you're busting your back doing an honest day's work in a city that's been trying to scrape you off its heels since the day you stepped off the boat. And then next you're stuffing your pockets full of Salieri's dirty money. <laughs> Go get him, Tommy! Teach these boys a lesson. Break every bone in their bodies. You want me to become one of those Wall Street boys? Don't sass me, Tommy. I'm trying to teach you the ropes so you don't get strangled by them. Now, you stay straight with me, you're gonna be living the high life, Tom. You abuse my trust. Don Salieri, you won't ever need to worry about me. Okay, then. Welcome to the family.
Next, we're going to introduce you to a turn-based multiplayer strategy FPS from a team in Montreal, Canada, Lemnis Gate. is coming in early 2021 and has a unique mechanic built around a 25-second time loop. Check this out. Next spring, get ready to experience memorable moments and non-stop action from all nine Star Wars films in Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. The entire series has been reimagined with new fun-filled Lego humor, and now we've got your first look at the gameplay trailer. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. The Force is unusually strong with him. That much is clear. Twisted by the dark side, young Skywalker has become. Tell me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> That boy is our last hope. No, there is another. I'm from the Resistance. Your sister Leia sent me. We need your help. Him, the Falcon. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Man, Lego Star Wars looks so fun coming to next gen as well. All right, we'll be right back with more world premieres from huge new games like Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Medal of Honor, Above and Beyond, and Destiny 2. But before that, here's a look at a game that is launching tonight on Nintendo Switch and Steam. It's called Struggling from Frontier, a fun physics-based platformer where up to two players control Troy, our fleshy hero. Check this out, and remember, you can play this tonight.
Hey guys, it's Brian. I just want to pop in here real quick and just let you know, we have about another 45 minutes or so on this, and Fall Guys is probably not going to show up until one of the, the final few announcements. So just let's all hang in there patiently. Let's all be cool. Um, feel free, get the hype up in chat if you'd like. Um, but let's, uh, let's just avoid excessive spamming. Um, it's okay to ask about it, where it's at. Whoa, Alexa's going off. Anyways, just wanted to pop in. Uh, there's a little commercial here, so um, I'll be back at the end. I gotta say, the game that I've given the most hours to that I love going back to is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I have to say, since Origins came out, this new reboot of Assassin's Creed, uh, so to speak, that was my first time getting into it. And I have put almost 400 hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. At the moment, I enjoy to play Fall Guys uh, with my friends. It's very funny, easy to learn, but hard to master. I have a few games that I binge play, um, games that I return to every year. Uh, Halo, the entire Master Chief Collection, is really a big one for me where that's concerned. But I also still just casually binge Animal Crossing and I've been doing that basically all year. I haven't put down Animal Crossing since I downloaded it. I find the daily repetitive rhythm so soothing and predictable. Uh, although much like my house, my island is still a complete tip. Up next, we have the award for best Microsoft Xbox game. And the winner is Tell Me Why. Congratulations to Don't Not Entertainment. Well, after a big day of Gamescom events and announcements, you'll be happy to know that IGN is going to help you digest all that info with the Gamescom Daily Show, where you can get all the daily highlights and a late night show experience from gamers for gamers. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Sid. Uh, and by the way, congratulations to Don't Nod for uh, Tell Me Why, a really important game that is out now that you can play um, on Xbox, Xbox and Game Pass. And uh, as we know, there's a lot going on in the world and that goes beyond the pandemic. Uh, between social conflicts we're seeing in the news and acts of nature, we can see how vulnerable we as people can sometimes be. And now I think it's as important time as ever to remember to come together and support one another. We are a global gaming community. There are millions of people watching tonight, and I know we're all here because we love games, and we know that games are good in the world and can bring us together, and I think we've all felt that in 2020. So I think that's really important to remember amongst all the games and trailers. All right, well, one, ga uh, one, one way as a community we can come together to do some good is the Gamescom Forest. Gamescom has launched a reforestation project by planting a Gamescom Forest together with the community. Gamers worldwide can go to gamescom.global and donate to plant more trees. So let's plant a forest together. 
All right, well, now we're going to move on to another game, and this one was announced back in May. Chorus is a dark space combat shooter where players take control of Nara on a quest to destroy the dark cult that created her, featuring rich, ray-traced 4K 60 FPS environments on next-gen hardware. Here is the first look at gameplay from Chorus. You have broken my heart. For your betrayal, you will be broken. How many crowns have you won? If one game has defined the summer of 2020, it absolutely is Fall Guys from Mediatonic in London and Devolver. This game is setting records and putting a much needed smile on everyone's face. Fall Guys, I think, represents our industry at its absolute best. Well, soon the Fall Guys experience will evolve with season two. There's a lot of new stuff coming and tonight, Mediatonic is about to give you an exclusive sneak peek at what's next. Get ready. I think the internet is about to freak out. Here it is, Fall Guys Season 2. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm the lead game designer on Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. And I just want to reach out and say thank you to everyone who's been playing and enjoying the game so far. As a team, we've been looking at all the fan arts, the memes, and the montages that people have been posting online, and the response to the game has really blown us away. Today, we just wanted to give everyone their first sneak peek at the rounds and the costumes that they can be enjoying as part of Fall Guys Season 2. Season 2, you'll be dressing your full guy as a medieval hero and competing across brand new rounds inspired by epic quests from the Middle Ages. Traverse giant drawbridges, dodge swinging axes and scale movable seed ramps in the quest for ultimate game show glory. enjoyed the sneak peek of Fall Guys Season 2. We're still adding the finishing touches to development, but if you want to stay up to date, then at Fall Guys Game on Twitter is where you want to be. See you on the start line. My father has Colorado in the palm of his hand, and he's afraid to close his fist. I am not. Liberty's got more brains and cunning than both her brothers put together. She's the only one who could actually run Colorado. She's already tried once. Vic's a depraved child, and Val's a brain without a spine. The years my father wasted grooming them for glory when I was right there.
go back to Arizona, Rangers, and I'll pretend none of this happened. Stay, and you die alone. I really haven't found any new appreciation for gaming at this time because my appreciation for gaming before couldn't be higher. Com certeza, jogos multiplayer preenchem completamente a conexão social que eu preciso ter com outras pessoas nesses tempos de isolamento. E é o mais próximo que a gente pode ter de experiências reais com pessoas que estão longe da gente. You get to travel all over the world in games, which is something I've always taken for granted. At the moment, I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima, and you know, I kind of prefer it to the real Japan just because I've heard that in real life they don't let you run around with tanas. I appreciate games a lot more than films, music or whatever and it's just fine uh, for me to to have the time to play with friends or even with my family uh, to have a lot of fun. I've been mostly at home with small children and gaming is the only thing that I get to do for myself anymore. I find it's not only an escape, it's also a way to challenge my brain. Gaming is becoming clearly more important for a lot of people. You know, play is a natural instinct, and from Animal Crossing to The Last of Us Part 2 or Ori, yes, yes, it's definitely an incredible time now to be a gamer, yes. Hey everyone, I'm Vince Sampella, head of Respawn Entertainment. When we set out to create Medal of Honor above and beyond, we knew we wanted to bring the series back to its roots. The Medal of Honor franchise is known for its powerful and exciting single-player stories that put the player in the boots of a soldier who was there. It's a series that is grounded in history, which tells emotionally authentic stories. Peter Hirschman, who directed the original Medal of Honor in 1999, is back at the helm of this project. You'll hear more from him in just a bit. Peter and I actually worked together on Medal of Honor Allied Assault in 2002, and I'm really happy he's joined us at Respawn to craft a completely new experience in VR. The team is creating a riveting and emotional journey through World War II like you've never seen or played. It weaves in the personal stories of the veterans and survivors of the war through powerful interviews that help set the stage for what players will experience. It's more than just a game. And we could not be more excited to show the world the next look at Medal of Honor Above and Beyond and the game's action-packed story. Let's take a look. Some of you will see combat. I know you're scared. Let me be clear with all of you. I'm scared too. Welcome to France, gentlemen. I lead the local resistance cell. Something big is happening inside Gestapo headquarters, and we don't know what it is. We're gonna have to improvise here. Members of the Resistance are perhaps the bravest people fighting in this war. But you really should stop. There is no future in it. Sorry to interrupt. Lieutenant? It'll be a wild ride, but we'll get you there. Jet fighters, brace yourselves! Like I said, boom! things as people I'm willing to sacrifice myself for. Somehow this motley crew has been tasked with saving civilization. God help us all.
Thank you so much, Vince. That looks incredible. And now we're here with Respawn Entertainment's Peter Hirschman, game director on Medal of Honor Above and Beyond to talk more about their new VR experience. Uh, Peter, I got to say, the trailer really grabbed me. Such an incredible story that you're telling, too. Uh, tell us a bit about this single-player experience. What can we expect? Well, Jeff, thank you for having us on the show. The, I'm representing a whole team back at Respawn that's been working really hard on this, and it's, uh, it's so exciting to premiere the trailer uh, with you. Uh, Metal Gear, uh, going back to its roots, uh, was always about putting uh, the player in the boots of a soldier fighting in World War II. Um, and with VR, we're able to do that in almost a literal way. Uh, it's, it's definitely the most immersive experience, most immersive combat experience uh, I've ever been able to work on. Um, and the story follows uh, you as a player being recruited into the Office of Strategic Services, um, commonly known as the OSS. Uh, and their mission was sabotage, espionage, search and rescue, everything uh, in between. Uh, you name it, they did it. Um, and they're known by a different set of initials uh, now, the, the CIA. Um, but during World War II, uh, they sent operatives all, all over Europe, uh, deep behind enemy lines. Uh, and that allows us to tell a story where you get to go to these places and locations and participate in events that really helped shape the outcome of the war. One of the things I love about the trailer is you can tell there's a lot of interactivity in the environment, emerging game player. You got the piano and other things in there. Tell us a bit about um, how you're using that to, to tell the story. It seems like it's all kind of through a first person perspective, but there are some story sequences. How do you tell the story? Oh, well, we shot, we shot over 120 pages, um, you know, which is more than some feature films. Uh, we had a, a huge international cast of phenomenal actors, uh, and, and it was fantastic. And the story follows a, a, a classic three-act three, three act structure. Um, act one is working with the, the French resistance, getting ready for the invasion. Uh, act two is D-Day itself and the fight uh, to get to Berlin. Uh, and then the third act is dealing with the Nazi secret weapon program, which you know, involved things like the 262 uh, jet and the V2 rocket and, and things that could have really turned the tide of the war if, if we hadn't stopped them. Um, so you get to go on this, this journey, you know, this story. Um, and the story is shot all from your perspective. Because it's VR, your head is the camera. We don't have cutscenes. we don't have edits. Everything, uh, everything revolves around your perspective. So you experience this story completely in first person as, as if you are there. Um, so it creates a much more intimate and, and uh, uh, emotional connection with the characters and the things going on around you. Uh, it, it was a, an incredible way to, to shoot. Um, one of our animators stood in for the, the player throughout, uh, throughout the three weeks that we were on stage. Um, and all the actors are, are always reacting and talking to you directly. And in VR, it's such a, a powerful thing. It's all about building that emotional connection. And it just makes the experience all the more uh, authentic. Well, you and Vince, I know this this series is really close to your heart. And uh, I, I, I saw the trailer, I'm like, wow, there's, just, there's so much there to, to experience. It looks really rich and detailed, obviously authentic as well. Um, you know, paying tribute um, to everyone that uh, was involved in, in the war. I, I wanted to ask you also about multiplayer, which is something that Respawn is really known for. And you've had a great single player experience, but I hear you might also be doing MP too. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the thing about VR is that, uh, you know, I've spent so much, I mean, we've known each other a long time. I, you know, I, you know, you spent so much of your career trying to map natural human movements to a to a controller and just figuring out things like making them feel good and, and one of the hardest ones is, is leaning. And in VR, you know how you duck? You, you just duck. And, and how you lean in VR, you, you just lean. And so the ability to lean around a corner, just kind of peek around the corner and see where the bad guy is, is just it, it heightens the tension so much. It makes it it makes it feel all the more real. And when you put that into a multiplayer experience, it, it just raises it to a whole nother level. So we are shipping, in addition to the campaign, we are shipping a, a full suite of VR modes, uh, including a few that you can only do in, in VR. And we're really excited about uh, people playing those, uh, um, you know, uh, after it comes out. Wow. Well, definitely a full-blown VR experience. I got to say, I'm really excited to uh, put the headset on and try this. And it's coming out uh, later this year, right? 
coming out holiday. So uh, yeah, fasten your seatbelts. Uh, we're we're we are so excited to to bring it to players. We've been working on it a long time. Like like you mentioned, it's a passion project for for Vince and I and everyone at Respawn. Um, it's it's uh, it's a wonderful full circle. Uh, experience for a lot of us that got our started our careers working on those original set going back first one and 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 uh, uh, Allied Assault and now to be able to bring above and beyond uh, to a whole new generation is uh, is one of the most exciting things we've been involved with. Awesome, thank you so much, Peter. Opening night live. We'll be right back, and in the meantime, here's a look at a new game that is launching tonight. The world was broken. Fractured by the magic the Vow Keepers said they would protect us from. Spellstorms still rage across the ruins of the Hollow Lands. This is proof, they said. It isn't safe. It can't be controlled. Magic cannot be used. But I am a battle mage. I have broken my vow. And now I fight to break free.
So many great games in Xbox Game Pass, and many of tonight's games are in it as well. Uh, every year at Gamescom, we like to highlight some incredible games made in Germany. And tonight, we have a special announcement about one of the most legendary German games of all time, created by Factor 5. Enjoy. Factor 5 was so far ahead of the curve, and each of their games pushed game technology as far as possible. I'd say they're one of the greatest indie developers of all time. Sound is beautiful, the graphics are beautiful, the gameplay this was the first game that allowed me to completely fulfill my musical vision. It defined my career and the fans have been there ever since. To this day, it's one of my proudest works. In June, Bungie revealed a new era of Destiny 2 that starts on November 10th with Beyond Light. For the first time ever, Guardians will add a new elemental power to their arsenal, the Dark Power of Stasis. With Stasis, players will take on the powers of darkness to control and dominate the battle. Here's an all-new look at Stasis from Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Gates are open. The darkness is here. As you step away from the light, we need only look inward. Focus your power. Let it grow. Our fight is far from over. give out tonight and that is best Sony PlayStation game. So without further ado, the winner is Cyberpunk 2077. Congratulations. Of course, there are even more awards than the ones I announced tonight. So check out the Gamescom Awards user voting where you can vote for your favorite streamer, Gamescom's most wanted and best of Gamescom. The winners will be revealed at Gamescom Best of Show along with cool cosplayers, esports and more. So tune in on Sunday, August 30th at 8 p.m. Central European time to see the grand finale of this year's Gamescom where we give gamers the stage.
That's it for me tonight. But before I turn it back to Jeff, I just want to say that I hope everyone out there is staying safe and healthy. We're all in this together, so take care. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, uh, Sydney. It's great to have you on the show again this year. Uh, all right, well, a lot of people have been wondering what will the next generation of gaming feel like? How will it be different? What is that generational difference? Well, back in June, we saw the announcement of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart from Insomniac Games, a title which uses the power of PlayStation 5, the SSD hard drive, and the DualSense controller to create an experience that Insomniac says is only possible on brand new hardware. Well, now it's time for you to decide if you see the difference. Here's an extended, uninterrupted demo of live PlayStation 5 gameplay of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Enjoy. saw him, we may still have time to put a stop to this. Hey, I think I found the bomb back. Oh, dear. <laughs> Let's show him how it's done. Oh, oh, All right. Bringing out the big guns. <laughs> Nefarious. Put down the Dimensionator. Yeah, right. Today I will finally be free of the both of you. Soon, everything you see will be mine. Say goodbye. to happen? Hitting Nefarious' device seems to have destabilized reality. The bridge is shot! There has to be another way across. Hmm. The rifts appeared to react to your device. Try pointing it at one of them. <laughs> that was rather exciting. Games before trade! Uh, 
Kraken. Or at least a very large octopus. I will never get used to that. Hey, at least we're on the same planet this time. Nefarious is on the other side of that building. Let's get moving before he does anything else to break reality. after all these just to try and take over the universe again? Yeah, I kind of wish he was doing a worse job. He must have more planned than he is telling us. That's what I'm afraid of. Are away from Nefarious! Oh no, not right now! Whoa. The dimensions are weakening considerably! Ratchet, we are too late. Ratchet? Who? There you have it, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and now I am joined by Marcus Smith and Mike Daly from Insomniac Games. Uh, guys, it was so great to see that uh, long, uninterrupted demo of uh, Rift Apart, and I have so many questions. Uh, it's amazing to see what you're doing with the power of PS5 and the SSD. Um, let me ask you first, Marcus, what are you able to do with Rift Apart that you haven't been able to do before in a Ratchet game because of the power of PS5? I mean, first and foremost, it's just pure horsepower enables us to fill our worlds with the kind of density and life that we've never been able to do before. Um, more importantly, perhaps, though, is the dimensional shifting that we have going on, which uses the SSD uh, that allows us to fling the player from planet to planet to planet uh, lightning fast, like in, in way, way faster than any we've ever been able to do before. Yeah, the, the Rift Tether, we saw that in the uh, demo. We had seen some of that in the, the trailer. So that's that's all actual gameplay. Mike, I'm curious, like, how does that how does that work as you kind of play through the game? Are there certain moments and levels where you can jump, or how, how do you play through that? Yeah, so in the game, there is dimensional damage spread throughout the galaxy that Ratchet and Clank have to find a way to fix. And you can find these weak points in space-time that you can pull to, to you with your rift tether. It's like being able to lasso a portal. And that enables you to basically like warp across the world to find new places to discover or gain a tactical advantage in combat. 
Wow. Yeah, I got to say, like, when you see that and you imagine the, the jumping from multiple worlds uh, at, 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 you know, at instantaneously almost, and it sounds like there's no load screens throughout the entire game. That's right. We're going to see That's right. Yep. Wow. All right. You bite. So confident both of you say it. I like it. Um, now, <laughs> let me ask you about DualSense. That's something that is a big part of PS5. Uh, I've had a chance to hands on the controller with the adaptive triggers and the haptics. Um, how are you using that for, to sort of impact the gameplay of Rift Apart? So at the heart of every Ratchet and Clank game is a powerful arsenal of weapons that just exude a ton of personality. And the dual sense is sort of like, it feels like it was made for Ratchet and Clank just because the haptics give us a whole new layer for the weapons to express themselves. So for example, your burst pistol, of course it gives you like a satisfying click or kick with every bullet. But when you throw the shatter bomb, you can actually feel the energy pulsing off the grenade fade away as it gets further apart from you. Basically, the haptics are expressive enough that every weapon feels different and you can tell what you're holding. But of course, the adaptive trigger like takes that to a functional level where in addition to the trigger pull feeling unique, we can actually use that as a super intuitive way to add alternate functions to the weapons. So. For example, in the demo, we've got the Enforcer, which is a double-barreled shotgun. You can pull the trigger part of the way down until you hit resistance to fire a single barrel, and then whenever you feel like it's the right time, pull it the rest of the way for a double shot. So you might be swarmed by a bunch of little enemies. You only want to waste one shot on them, and then wait a minute for even more to swarm in before finishing them off. But a big guy, you probably want to just give both barrels to right away. Mm -hmm. So there's a nice intuitive way of basically raising the skill ceiling and giving you more ways to play better. Wow. No, uh, I'm excited to see how you guys are going to roll that out across what I'm sure are an insane uh, you know, group of weapons, as always. Uh, Plot-wise, Marcus, tell us a bit about this game. I think some fans have wondered, you know, does this tie into the movie plot line, the game plot line? Like, how? tell us in the Ratchet-verse where this sits. Yeah. Well, canonically, this is a, an extension of uh, Ratchet and Clank um, into the Nexus, the 2013 game. But it's a standalone adventure. So it's one that, it, even if you've never played a Ratchet and Clank game, you can get into it and you'll understand it and you'll enjoy it. Um, for hardcore fans, we have a lot of nods. You're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of returning characters and planets and uh, see them all through a whole new light of uh, multi multiple dimensionality. Yeah, no, this this Rift Tether thing, I think, looks really exciting. And how often, like, is that something we saw in the demo? Is that something you're going to see, like, frequently in the game? Are there special moments? Like, I guess I'm curious, like, how often you use that technique for gameplay. So the, the Rift Tether has created these anomalies all throughout the galaxy. You'll encounter those pretty often. There's even a few more types of dimensional damage you'll encounter that we haven't shown yet. Okay. Now, being pulled between worlds... That's, that's localized to chasing after Dr. Nefarious in the demo. Um, and that's sort of reserved for special moments when you really have to, um, when, when the dimensional damage really tears wide open. Well, I gotta say, it looks incredible. And then at the end, we got another tease of uh, this female Lombax. Uh, I, I know you guys have confirmed she is playable in parts of the game. Uh, I think everyone wants to know though, do we have a name for her? Uh, I mean, the world is more interesting with mysteries, and we're going to have to keep this one uh, a little longer. Do, do we get a number of letters in her name or anything? <laughs> Too many smart people on the internet. They'll, get, they'll figure it out right away. She's not named Abby, though, right? <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to wait and see what you guys have in store for us. I got to say, I mean, it looks incredible. The Ratchet games are always so much fun. And as you said, when you think of the power of SSD and the DualSense all coming together, uh, it looks really exciting. Before we go, though, uh, I think everyone around the world wants to know when we're going to get to play this game. Anything you can share with us on where you're at in development right now? Mike. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> So Ratchet and Clank is coming out in the PS5 launch window. So we haven't announced a release, a specific release date yet. So stay tuned for that. What kind of window? Is it big window? So no, I'm just kidding. All right, that's all we're gonna get, I'm sure. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart coming in the launch window for PlayStation 5. I gotta say, uh, Insomniac, uh, we're so excited what you guys are doing across PlayStation, and uh, the game looks incredible. So thank you so much for all you've done, and we look forward to seeing more of uh, Rift Apart soon.
Thanks, Jeff. Take care. All right, Marcus and Mike yeah. from Insomniac, thanks, thanks for showing us that first look at Ratchet and Clank or PlayStation 5. And that's going to do it for Opening Night Live. Thank you so much for watching from around the world and make sure to stay tuned all weekend for more live Gamescom coverage at Gamescom.global. As for us, we'll see you later this year for the Game Awards 2020. Our team is hard at work to build a very special live show for you coming in December. We'll see you then. Good night. Hey, welcome back, chat. That was a that was a two hour long event, which we knew uh, knew about ahead of time, but it wasn't like posted out there. I don't think it was common knowledge. Uh, Nemi, thank you so much for the super chat there at the the very end. I want to thank a lot of you guys for uh, for <laughs> for everything uh, in the stream, the mods. Thank you for uh, trying to keep the chat clear. We we caught some, you know. Most of the uh, spam, we also probably caught some we probably shouldn't have, but that's okay. You know what? We do what we do to try to keep the chat clean, uh, keep it moving, easy to read. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's opening night live. I, I was here for two reasons. One was Fall Guys Season 2, which was like a minute and a half long uh, little video clip. And uh, I always like looking at these recommendations. Like, why is YouTube recommend it. coffee i do like coffee that explains it apparently youtube knows me better <laughs> better than i do um so yeah fall guys there's a minute and a half i retweeted the fall guys tweet so uh check my twitter uh there's a uh, uh bottom, and the link in the description you can also see it in the bottom corner uh so fall guys looks really interesting season two they didn't really show us they didn't tell us anything what they were doing as far as a battle pass system or or, or season reward system how many levels uh, they didn't mention anything about ranked gameplay they didn't mention um removing perfect match because that game has just got to go that's just my own little thing um yeah basically they showed us kind of like reskinned versions of some of the existing games they kind of uh, they changed them around the maps there there's uh the hoopsie daisies kind of a new layout and a lot of new layouts uh, some new game modes uh, there was one where it looked like a team of uh, fall guys had to kind of move a box together to, to to make a platform a stairs up to a higher platform so it looks like that you're gonna have to kind of work with your enemies a little bit more than maybe we currently do i don't know um so I'm really interested in that. I want to go through and, and rewatch it again, uh, see if I can't uh, figure out if there's any kind of, if there's anything else to be taken away from it. Maybe there's a little Easter egg or something. As you guys know, I'm pretty darn good at Fall Guys. I will be streaming it tomorrow night at my normal stream uh, day, which is, well, typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, tomorrow's stream will be Fall Guys. I will be streaming with the Trophy Club. And... Uh, trying to improve on my 102 career victories. Uh, I also have the platinum for it, so come watch it if you need inspiration. Prancer Boy coming in with a big uh, uh, $10 super chat here at the very end. He says, I feel 2020 is going to be a revolution in gaming, even though it's been an awful year. It has definitely been an awful year. I hope you're excited for the future of it, and I love your videos of every game you play. Stay safe, Brian. Thank you so much, Prancer Boy. Uh, I appreciate it. You are the best. Yeah, 2020 has been an interesting year for games. Um, I think some of my favorite games this generation have all come out in this year. I mean, even Maneater, which is a game no one cares about, but I seem to, to really love. But between Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part Two, Fall Guys is probably my game of the year um, right now. It's a little early. We still have Crash, Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed, Call. I mean, there's so many great games that are going to be coming here, especially between now and the end of the year. And I'm really super excited about that. Uh, so make sure you guys check out the Fall Guys stream tomorrow. I have probably 50 hours of Fall Guys stream footage on the channel if you want to watch back. Uh, not all 102 victories, but probably 90 of them are um, amongst the uh, amongst the group, including the six-game streak in the last stream where I was completely drunk. <laughs> Didn't even realize I had a six-game streak until... Um, forgetting about dreams... I think Sony forgot about dreams, to be honest with you. Cynical. Uh, let me know, chat. I'll give you guys here a minute. I'm just going to pop in the chat, just kind of finish things off. Uh, let me know what you thought of this event. What was your favorite?
favorite thing if it wasn't Fall Guys. Um, yeah, the Fall Guys trailer happened. It wasn't really a trailer. It was just a sneak peek at season two. And it was exactly what they said it was. It was a sneak peek. I wanted a whole lot more. I needed another five minutes of Fall Guys. But, you know, what they gave us was 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 good. <laughs> I just I just want more chat. You have no idea how addicted I am to Fall Guys. I think you guys know. Um anyone know when season 2 is coming out? That's a good question. Uh there is currently hang on a second. Oh, I don't have my PlayStation on. Never mind. Um season uh, 1 has 39 more days left, so it's going to be a while. Uh if there's a week break between seasons, if it goes from one to the other, I, I, I don't know. We'll find out. Well, Travis says, kind of upset they didn't cover Horizon 2. Kind of hyped for it, really. Well, I, I, I don't know if I'd be upset about that. I would never have expected Sony to allow um, that. That's something Sony wants to control the message on. That's something they need to control the message on because of the, um, the controls, the haptic feedback, and all that other stuff. Sony is going to Sony's going to carry that baby across the finish line themselves. I, I promise you that. Ryan Moore says, much love. Thanks for streaming this, Brian. Got 20 more minutes of work and see you all tomorrow stream. Ryan Morris, man. How do you like that? How do you like that you have a like, three-hour gaming event right at the end of your shift? That event's over, and then you're, you're clocking out for the day. It's a great feeling. Uh, do I think the Platinum will be easier to achieve for Fall Guys in Season 2? Not based on anything we um, currently know. Um, uh, they have hinted that possible new modes coming out in the future will alleviate some of the pressure of getting the infallible trophy. Um, but to answer the rest of your question, how did I acquire it? Did I use the quitting bug? I did use the exploit to pop the trophy, um, in part because I was testing it. I needed... There was a lot of reports of people saying that it was patched and it's not working. Uh, so I made it a point to do it using the exploit because as a trophy guide uh, author, and uh, it, it was important for me to know um, why is this patched? Is it not patched? Are people having trouble with it? Is it bugged? Why is it bugged? And that's kind of the stuff I figured out. Having said that, I did do a five-game legit streak af right after that. And then I did a six-game win streak as well, both of which were part of streams. Uh, Cam wants to know when Travis is getting home. So, Travis, would you like to share with the class? <laughs> I'm probably going to just tweet him. He's like, fuck that. Um, what was my favorite part of the event? Yeah, it was definitely... I, I think my favorite part, honestly, was Ratchet and Clank. Uh, as much as I, I am super hyped for Fall Guys and as great of a Fall Guys player I am, you know, ranked number one in the world, according to me. <laughs> um, but really, I, I think what we learn from Ratchet and Clank is is far more important as, as, as it relates to the PlayStation 5. Uh, seeing that, they said there's no loading screens in the game, but that's completely false. Um, there were loading screens, but they were very super short, and they were hidden within a transition between worlds. Uh, you'll see him, he went through a portal, and then there's like this little three-second transition when you're kind of like in space, and there's all these shapes. And then you come out the other side of the portal. That is a loading screen. Um, so it was really, really cool to see how they're going to use um, the game to hide these uh, elements, such as a uh, loading screen. Um, I also saw a lot of great... Uh, global uh, illumination and lighting. Uh, I saw sections that looked to appear to be ray tracing, but it's really hard to tell on a 1080p stream. That's something I'd, I would need to look at the 4K uh, raw footage, ideally. Digital Foundry, I'm sure, is going to do a breakdown out of it because it's the most next-gen thing that we can really look and see, hey, this feature does this, this feature does that. It's a really good way to kind of to see uh, features of the PlayStation 5 coming to life. Something that I don't think they've done a great job with so far, and Xbox hasn't even bothered with it yet. So it's good to see that they're, they're starting to do a little bit more of that. Yeah, hard loading screen like Ghost of Tsushima is what they the meant. Um, similarly to uh, God of War uh, with its single camera, uh, there was 
Oh, Black Ops Cold War rocks. That's a good. That's a good pull too. That was. Uh, oh God, that was so long ago. <laughs> It was hard to remember. It was part of the stream. Of course, they did the reveal um, trail trailer yesterday. If you haven't seen it, I'm sold. I'm 100%. I'm all in. It was really good to get a little bit more further information. Uh, they're really showing off the campaign. They're going to show off the multiplayer a uh, couple weeks, a week. I don't remember. And then um, uh, zombies after that. So, yeah, um, I just want to give a... <laughs> A shout out to the guys at Insomniac who had to deal with the worst joke Jeff Keeley had probably ever made, and I don't, I don't know if it was insensitive, not for me to say, um, but trying to get the name of the female Lombax out of the Insomniac team, and he's like, "Well, how many letters?" And then he says, "It's not Abby, is it?" Yeah, yeah. Way to throw it. <laughs> Abby, of course, a new character in Last of Us Part Two that a lot of people are not happy with or don't like. And I don't think it's as big of a deal now as it was a month or two ago. But, um, yeah, it was pretty classless of Jeff to kind of go down that road. But that's just my opinion. You guys can form your own. Uh, Cynical says, I'm just happy Raven got to flex their muscles with the Black Ops Cold War campaign. Absolutely. 100% agree with you. Um, you know, people have been making this whole thing about, well, you know, Treyarch's doing a two-year dev cycle, and oh no, two-year cycle. Well, they always used to be two years, and then they became three years uh, more recently in this generation. Um, but pr prior to that, they had two-year two year cycles for several, several, several games in the franchise, so no big deal. Uh, and that's going to be it, guys. I'm going to just go ahead and close this up shop here. Uh, still 800 of you guys here, so thank you if you made it to the end. Make sure you guys hit that like button. 400 of you did. Awesome. Uh, we have a new member tonight, uh, which is actually an old one, and that's Cam. Cam Anthony, thank you for being a member. It was a re-up, so. And uh, I want to thank all the Super Chats, Cyber Nemi, Prancer Boy, Cyber Nemesis. Wow. Uh, Martin J., thank you. Doc. Doc is really good at Warzone. Cam, that's who we need to play with. Anyways, on that note, guys, I'm going to give you guys the uh, Fall Guys exit here. So I will see you tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Remember, Fall Guys extravaganza tomorrow night. I'm going to rack up a whole, maybe a 12-pack of victories. That'd be kind of nice. I'll see you guys later.